Access Motion presents the way of movement professionals. Conversations with world-class physical therapists and other industry experts. Hi guys, this is Michael from Nexus Motion. How's everybody doing today? Uh, we have Mary Kate McDonald here. Uh, we're actually right in the middle of the 2018 Los Angeles Movement System Seminar. And uh, I'm just uh, making Katie work really hard <laughs> till the yeah. end of the day, but I just wanted to take a, a few minutes uh, to introduce you all uh, to one of my uh, very important mentors uh, that I've had the chance to learn from since I was a student at Washington University in St. Louis. So um, uh, thank you so much for being here, Katie. Uh, I know you, you had a class to teach this week and you have to fly out and, and you're busy on Monday too, so yes, you're taking the right. red eye back to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate you making the time to be here with all the Japanese participants as well as the American therapists as well. So um, Katie is obviously the Associate Professor uh, of Physical Therapy and Orthopedic Surgery at Washington University. Um, but I want to know, how did you choose to become a physical therapist initially? So I was thinking about this question, mm -hmm. Kajuda, and ever since I was in high school, I knew I wanted to be a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. And, and I, wh why, I'm not sure, but I, I was involved a lot in sports, like a lot of physical therapists, but the, the, my mom exposed me to a physical therapist who was doing neuro training, like Delman Delicato, do you remember that? It, it, you probably, it's an old, mm. Shirley would know about it, but it's an old training where they would take CP kids through and, and move for them and do all that. And she, she knew I was interested, so she took me to her friend to watch that. And it's, it was a very different thing to think about, but whatever reason, it got me interested. Mm -hmm. And then I just knew I wanted to be a physical therapist. So I was totally focused on how I could do that and how I could get into school and qualify and all that. So your mom sort of introduced you to the to, to the area. physical therapy world. She she was a teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, and sh but she just she knew she thought that's something I would be interested in too. Yeah, she, knew she was you well a, then. Yes, and she she was uh, our own little guidance counselor. She directed my brother and my sisters oh, all okay. to the all to the right career. So I yeah. trusted her. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Now um, you're from the East Coast, but you went to. Blue, mm -hmm. correct. So how did you find your way over to St. Louis? So my passion for, I knew at a very young age I wanted to be a physical therapist and at that time it was a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And um, the way they would do the admissions is they would, you, you would be accepted into the college and then you had to reapply as a junior to get into the physical therapy program. Oh, interesting. Okay. And so I was very nervous. I didn't know how I would do in college because I hadn't been there. And mm -hmm. I, nice. but St. Louis University would accept you as a freshman. If you maintained the average, you didn't have to reapply. You went right through the schooling. Okay, okay. And, and they still do that now, even though they do the DPT, they take them as freshmen in college and will take oh, them all the way through. So I knew that because of some friends who had come out here to go to St. Louis to go to school, and I, I was so nervous about not getting in. I was like, if they took me as a freshman, then I will come. So I didn't realize how far away it was from <laughs> <laughs> from the Boston area, but Boston area, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to go away, so I went away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. Now, uh, so how did you end up at Washington University? So that's a great story because what I I did a clinical at. As I was a student at St. Louis, I did a clinical at the WashU, uh, what was called IWJ mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. and um, the St. Louis U students hadn't been there, so I was one of the first ones that had gone because they always had WashU students. And my CI was Tony Delito, who is uh, run well. He's the dean of health and sciences, I guess, at Pitt yeah, now, Pittsburgh. and. Yes, um, Pittsburgh. And he was my CI, and he was from the East Coast also. And, and then Dave Sinecor was there, and, and then of course Steve Rose was there. So I came and I did the clinical there, and I realized that this was a different place. I had done another traditional outpatient ortho 
but there I was totally, they were thinking and talking and I ended up doing a research project with Tony and Dave. Oh wow, how lucky. Yes, and we did, and I was there till um, like eight o'clock at night and loving it, just love, I was just, mm -hmm. that my then um, husband at the time was like, what are you doing with all these men? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Late in the night, and uh, right. I just was so the, the the environment was amazing, and I just totally went into it. And we were just always talking and thinking. We created the, together this electrically elicited fatigue test, and we used the new Russian oh, stim, and we tested all these people, and we wrote. We ended up writing um, an article that got awarded uh, an APTA wow. award, and I was, you know, I just started that in. It, it, That's amazing that as an undergrad that you had the opportunity to do some research and even get yes, recognized right. for the work that but you the, put in. Yeah, I know, and the energy of these guys, mm -hmm. Steve and Tony and Dave, just totally. You're talking and, about uh, the late Steve Rose. Yes, yes. yes. Wow. So I got, uh, it was, and we got to work closely with him writing up the, um, and he's such an incredible um, mentor in that, I didn't know it was mentoring at the time, and he did, he was not very direct in his mentoring. He just sort of let you go mm -hmm. and find your way, but you always wanted to do well, and so I was so lucky to have that oh, influence. Wonderful. Yeah, and then I'm well. I actually didn't meet Shirley until I started working with him mm -hmm. there for a while. So. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So, um, uh, so that's how you ended up at WashU, mm -hmm. and you sort of never left because I you've never been there. did. No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's really my only employer yeah. since I've been a physical therapist. Um, what subjects do you teach at the program in physical therapy at WashU? So I um, am involved in the orthopedic series. Mm -hmm. We call it Diagnosis and Management of Musculoskeletal Conditions. We have um, three sets of courses, uh, three semesters of courses. and so. Um, in the first one that I don't teach in, they start the basic movement exam, and then I come in and start teaching, take the basic movement exam, and then add in all the traditional orthopedic tests, too. So, to, so they do a full rounded uh, orthopedic exam. So I um, initiate that, and with, along with, I mean, I'm just a, the herder of cats, who so have a lot of people teaching, but I, we get that going, and then we have another semester uh, that Greg Holtzman also runs. Yeah. yeah. So those are the big ones. And then the, the other course I coordinate is their last semester. So they're out in clinicals and they come back. I really enjoy working when the students have had more experience. And so we do, Susie Cornbleet and I do a whole, um, uh, it, basically an integration course. They come, we give them things to collect while they're away and then they right. come back. And yes, I remember those. Yes. <laughs> We do error rounds, reassessment rounds, mm -hmm. which is fascinating, and people yeah. reflecting, and great experience. We do, we have them practice their, uh, get me, me, like more mentoring with their uh, movement exam. Mm -hmm. um, they write a case report, all these, so they take all their knowledge and try to bring it together. What was nice, I thought was nice about the case integration class was that instead of us having to present first, the faculty went ahead and say, "Well, here, here is our example," mm -hmm. and so <laughs> you know, and we're just like, "Oh, thank goodness! Like we aren't the only you know ones that are making the mistakes." Well, of course, we all make mistakes, but it's uh, nice to see the vulnerability side yes. of you know our, our our teachers as well. I mean, we all go through it all, so nice we, to hear yeah, some we, of those we, stories. Their first class, we I would explain how to do the the presentation, and then we do ours, and we mm -hmm. tell some pretty funny stories mm -hmm. about errors that we've made right. and, our, that, and everybody does that. So that's, yeah. I'm glad you remember that, that's important. <laughs> well, I just felt kind of relieved at the same time, <laughs> you know. Uh, not that making mistakes is a good thing, but you learn more from it. You learn, you learn more right? from it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what's nice, I think, uh, is that I, I really appreciate it. The, the entire faculty sort of are on board. You all have the same goals together. Mm -hmm. and I, I just felt like I was so lucky uh, to have, you know, faculty that care so much about, you know, making sure that we were learning and do you know why that happened and always challenging us. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think that's what helped me, you know, to, to be where I'm so far away from where you and Shirley are, but, you know, trying to be, trying to be and trying to get better every day.
Well, I think one of the other experiences in that integration was they do, you would evaluate medical students. Do you remember yes. that? Yes. And so we had them practice a movement exam and we invited the medical students to come, up, come over and we did it since you were at school. And mm -hmm. that was our first interprofessional, you know, experience where, and my goal was for the students to show the medical students how smart they are and what your what the physical therapist's body and knowledge is, and they didn't know they didn't they didn't right. well, they didn't know yeah. how smart we all were well, and what we well. did. And they, I have, I've been there long enough that people who are residents and have gone on and been you know physicians all the way have. I remember doing that. I remember yeah. Andrew Kane. Yeah, so that fine. that was that was really great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that. Um, and and your specialty areas of interest, like what what are the areas that you really it's a, uh, the neck and mm -hmm. chronic neck and TMJ. Mm -hmm. And I don't get, I need to write some more stuff up, but I have thought through the TMJ from a muscle standpoint mm -hmm. and what muscles work too much and too little. Mm -hmm. And it falls right over um, along with the thoughts of how you manage the cervical spine and then we add that in. So um, I work a lot with dentists yes. and uh, doing seminars with them and just teaching us the that we're, you know, what movement things we could help people with, and we know pretty quickly whether we can help them or not. Mm -hmm. So we do that, and then the patients, nobody wants to treat the chronic neck patient. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot to offer from a movement perspective for yes, them. of yeah. course. We all should know that uh, uh, the MSI, the Movement System Impairment Textbooks, the, the newer one uh, that covers the cervical spine, thoracic spine, and the extremities, the cervical spine chapter was written by uh, Katie. So, yeah, and I had the honor of translating yes. that chapter into Japanese. So you did a great that job. Was the, well, <laughs> you, you would never know. I know. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good. So, now, uh, I heard that you're going to be presenting uh, uh, with Patty Zorn uh, at the, uh, the AOMP uh, yes. conference mm -hmm. this year. On, and and tell, tell me what you guys are going to be presenting. So, Patty Zorn and I, who's, she's a fellow of the Academy, and has a lot of uh, manual background. And she has in the past taught in our program the manual therapy in our um, orthopedic curriculum. And so we've known each other a very long time. And we, uh, she always tells this story that I came up to her right after she was teaching very specific mobilization. I told her, you know, movement is as specific as your mobilization techniques. And she didn't, she was like, what are you talking about? So we invited her to come and listen to our seminars and all that and we got her so she was like whoa this is really appropriate and so over the years she has blended manual with movement mm -hmm. and um, we've had a lot of discussions about it and um, and she is a big you know very active in the manual therapy group but she now calls herself a musculoskeletal therapist not a manual therapist because she puts it all together and she does both so we have a lot of talk about cases and how the man, especially in the neck, how manual and movement go together. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to present um, a case about clinical decision making about a, a, a neck patient, a chronic neck patient, and when and where she decided to put hands on and do manual, and when she decided movement was appropriate. So we're going to sort of walk people through that clinical decision making tree, and then think about some of the treatments and that sort of thing. That's great. So movement and manual kind of marrying together, yes. coming together. Because it almost feels like there's a movement camp and there's a manual camp, know, and that just really kind of doesn't mm -hmm. feel all that well. And you know, and we both know that when we watch Shirley's demonstration, <laughs> I mean, her hands are all she over is. the subject of the patient. And you know, we joke about it. She's, she's the best manual you know, therapist ever in She's the fantastic. whole world. Yeah, I know. Um, we were kidding her about it today about doing snags. And right, all this <laughs> right, right. But I think when you when you look at the the, the great physical therapists uh, treating the patients, they all are end up doing the same thing. We might just be calling it something different, mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, the the precise optimum movement is what we're looking for. And when that happens, whether you're coaching them a different way or manual, whatever. They're all doing the same thing. Well, and I think the literature supports it too. Mm -hmm. So over the years, I, as I followed the literature through my career, there was a whole time where, okay, 
manual has a better outcome, say, for the neck patient. And then they're like, but exercise has a great outcome mm -hmm. for the, and then they finally figured out, well, let's put it together, and oh, guess what? That's probably the best outcome. And that was sort of repeated over time. So putting the exercise with the manual is mm -hmm. the best situation. Mm -hmm. So it, I think, as, you know, especially spine. Mm -hmm. So I, I, hopefully we'll get a good right. reception about and, it. And then we have the functional training and the uh, motor learning. Yes, and, yes. You know. And we're going to try to, uh, you know, explain some of that to mm -hmm. people too because it, it right. is a little different. Yeah. Uh, now, y you are also the Associate Director for the Residency and Fellowship mm -hmm. Program at uh, WashU. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you tell us about how it, it got started at, and, and your vision uh, with, you know, how that's yeah. going to go? So that's my latest passion mm -hmm. over the last 10 years. Um, so I was invited uh, many years ago by Claire uh, Frank and Kathy Kamagi and, and um, uh, who's our other guy that jo um, why am I forgetting? Joe Godges. Joe's Godges. Joe, Joe Godges, Godges. Yes. To come out and teach their, their uh, they had a movement fellowship mm -hmm. and um, I didn't the funny story is I, I, I was just teach I thought I was teaching a seminar. I didn't realize I was teaching to fellows or anything. And it, on the break I found out they explained it to me after my first lecture that <laughs> Oh they didn't they didn't give you No, I didn't I had no idea who I was talking to. Oh, okay. I was in the gym at the LA Sunset um, Kaiser and oh, and we were all there and I, so I thought I was just giving a Con Ed seminar, and then I talked to Claire and Kathy, and I said, no, who am I talking to? What am I doing? And so they took me out to lunch and explained what a fellowship was. I had no idea what a residency was. And they, and they really guided me. And it, But what happened is when I was, a lot of our information was part of their curriculum. They had a lot of other uh, information, too. But they, they, the movement exam was a key part of their um, curriculum. And as we were flying back to St. Louis, I was like, why aren't we doing this? Mm -hmm. This is crazy. And so I marched right into Dr. Goosinger's <laughs> yes. the next day and oh, said, yeah. we need to do a, a, a movement system fellowship. And it was actually called movement science at the time. And she's like, okay, what's that? No. And so we mm -hmm. worked through and they were so supportive and getting it up and running. And I just, it made to me and what I like to work with the people who have the experience and then teaching them this and then integrate it into their mm -hmm. practice and it was just something I really, the groups of that I liked working with so we developed this um, postgraduate training. We started with the in-house and now we're at this um, a regional uh, model where we, we find very good mentors including Michael Moritani um, to so people, they get mentored where they live and then come to St. Louis and we have online education and it's sort of just evolved over time and um, it, it, I just love working with people because they're so appreciative. They're so great therapists who are adding to their knowledge and mm -hmm. do that. And then we have a women's health residency uh, that we have that's in-house mm -hmm. that I work with Dr. Tracy Spitznagel, mm -hmm. enjoyed that and then I was a, we're hopefully get an ortho one going at some ortho residency for our yeah. the hope. And then I'm involved at the national level with the ABPTRFE and the council and uh, the regulations looking at the standards and, yeah. and, and reviewing those for programs and stuff. So. I'm just getting exhausted listening <laughs> to all of that. Do you have time, have time for yourself? Well, that, I love that. I just that. <laughs> Well, speaking of having time for yourself, um, what are some books uh, that you've read that you've enjoyed, you know, the most? It could be a recent one or just classic books that you just kind of go back to over and over. Well, you know, I just, I was thinking about this because I don't read that many books because I'm always trying to read an article or something like that. But in this, when I do my summer vacation back to Cape Cod, I always pick out a couple of books to do it. And usually, one's usually, they're just sort of, light reading, but I usually pick one that, and it's usually a historical novels, or the one I read this summer that my dad gave me was the Jim Comey, um, A Higher Loyalty. Okay. So Jim Comey is the, got fired, you know, by Trump. He was the FBI director. So he, I just love the real um, mm -hmm. description of, you know, behind the scenes and what he described. And 
Um, I'm waiting for the, the new one to come out that's, uh, what's it called, the one about Trump that's written by Woodward okay. and Bernstein, but Woodward. Um, at those, at the real, you yeah. like the nonfiction. I like the nonfiction uh -huh. and the and the historical mm -hmm. novels. I really, I really like that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I think so does Shirley. She likes reading uh, historical books. Yeah, that's what she like, told me. yeah. Um, Hillary Clinton's mm -hmm. biography. I just, uh -huh. I love reading all that and hearing like all the gossiping stories yeah, about it. Sort of thing. But they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of Shirley. Um, uh, who are the five people uh, who influence you the most? And it could be in the past or current or, or just, you know, you're, you're the average of five people who you surround yourself with. Well, I mean, foremost are my parents. Both my, you heard about my mom and then my dad has a huge influence on me and, and both of them so supportive in what I've, I've done. And I moved away from them, you know, and but have always been we've all been part of our lives. I always am back east um, in the summer and the winter, but so they're huge in my life and they're still with me. They're in 81 and 82. So, um, and then I have and my sisters and brothers, we all sort of help to make sure they continue on. And then after that, professionally, Steve Rose, mm -hmm. he's a little part, of, he was in, you know, with us in, in my part of my career. And then of course, Shirley um, Sarman. And, but then as I described too, I think, um, Tony DeLito mm -hmm. and Dave Sinecore, both people who just were very inviting and encouraging and just just wanted to do well. And Linda Van Dillen, who I've mm -hmm. done a lot of research with in the past, and all of them and their integrity and their um, their passion just are great models for me. So wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, uh, you know, it's it's so nice to get a a little bit more insight mm -hmm. into a little bit of history and in your vision, you know, from now on. And uh, uh, thank you for having me uh, be a part of the fellowship program too. I think my favorite part is, you know, when when we're having to teach something, you know, I think the teacher or the mentor is the one that's Learn. maybe learning the most. Yes. <laughs> uh, and and I really love that about the, the education side of things. And, yes. Yes. Uh, so I'm very grateful. Um, yes, hopefully uh, you all can, um, you know, go out to St. Louis mm -hmm. uh, and take the, uh, the MSI course uh, that you will meet all of the faculty uh, at WashU. Um, uh, they, they're all amazing uh, to learn from. And uh, she also, you also teach elsewhere too, all over the country and mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong, I've been to Hong Kong. Uh, places Kong. like that. So. I went to Barcelona, not Barcelona, well, Spain I went Spain. this summer. Yeah. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Katie. You're and uh, I think it's time to hit uh, happy hour. Happy hour. <laughs> so, thanks everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>